I'm Mary Ellen Lucas, and I'm the author of Are You Still Mine? And I would think at this point in time that I would have a, an answer to the question, what is your book about? And yet even today, going through it and going through my mind and into my heart, trying to figure out what is the first line of an answer to why I wrote this book. How do I begin? And it came up the same as all the other times. How can I put into words what took me 1,300 pages to write? And then suddenly something happened. For the first time, I looked at the cover of my book. And there it was. This book is about the greatest love story never told. Never told. And yet it's been a question for over centuries. And that question is simply, was Jesus and Mary Magdalene married? And knowing the answer to that question as being yes, they were, you realize why this truth, this beautiful love story was hidden away. Because if proven to be true, it would rock everything that was ever taught about Jesus. It would change everything about the world. And at this time, it is so sorely needed that in order to get the truth out, I had to establish my own religion. I had to write down all my beliefs. I had to tell about everything that I was taught by God through a process of which not to be mistaken by channeling, but actually knowing and being guided by a consciousness by virtue of persistent memory can give the answer as yes to this question. Yes they were married. What happens when that question is answered? Well, the very first thing that could happen is what we write down and which you'll find in the book and it's this statement. It is said, whenever a timeless mystery enters into time, the most powerful positive vibrations of epic proportion brings a disruption of negative energies, taunting these powers, and yet causing change. When you disrupt a negative force that keeps you locked down, when you find yourself at a loss with no end to the questions that you have about life, maybe your own life, there are so many answers you could be given. But when it comes right down to it, you see that even today, or especially today, there's a desolation of spirituality. So we wonder, at this point in history, where there appears to be a tear in the fabric of humankind's heart, and we see this terror emptying itself of life. We have to believe and begin to see through a transcendental eye, an eye not bogged down by issues and problems and tainted by things that bring nothing but negativity and even a sense of hopelessness, to see that 
It is these times that we see an outpouring of divine love coursing back to heal, to heal this terror. As God wounds, he heals. Yes, that's what we are told. But what about if God wasn't just he? What if God was he and she, the divine masculine and the divine feminine creators who loved us unconditionally, who formed our first, created our first parents as transcendental beings, making one being so that when separated, there was a love that could not surpass theirs, sons God. God's love encompasses everything and is perfect. And what everything perfect about this love and beauty, he poured into these two beings. First one and then separated into two to stay as one. What if then Adam and Eve decided be due to, I don't know, maybe in a sense curiosity at first because they were intelligent, but maybe they too being tempted thought that their love could be even more perfect if they were human. Thus, Adam and Eve becomes human with a choice. A choice to find a love that maybe is even greater than what they already have and find that this love changed their world. Changed everything about the world as they knew it. It's what Asians believe. It's what we talk about. It's what's in the book. That's not the end of the story. Our lives as we see them today wasn't a punishment for a choice that was made at the beginning of humankind. But it continues and forms and becomes for us true love. How can we say it's true love? We could say it's true love because as we all know, to bridge the gap back to the transcendental, back to where originally Adam and Eve lived, we needed God to help. You have Adam, you have Eve, you have a choice. The only really sad story, they couldn't go back. It's kind of like you made your bed, you sleep in it, you would think. But in a more positive way, you have made a decision, God would say, and changed your life. Now, I promise you, you will get everything back. But not until true love comes back into the world to the degree that you lived as a transcendental couple. What does that mean? God himself and herself, the balanced sacred God, divine masculine, divine feminine, through their love begets the only begotten child, child, imaging and revealing a balanced sacred marriage. Second person, divine masculine, divine feminine, who choose to come to us on earth in order to teach true love, to show 
that despite the hurdles, despite the hurts, the pain, the suffering, love endures. And that God hasn't given up, God, but God actually has the plan to show that this life here isn't only about sin and atonement and and learning that, you know, you have to live up to a certain image or standard in order to get back into God's graces, but to actually find that you, you have it all. It's just you have to have a guide, a guide back. So you have God, second person, divine, masculine, and feminine, taking on the forms of Jesus and Mary Magdalene to teach and to show and to live as examples of this true love. Going through all that we go through and hearing the teachings by their personal experiences how much God loves, and how to get back everything that was lost. And we could even get a taste of all of this and perhaps maybe rebuild lives by this knowledge that this true love, which was hidden away, kept secret, laughed at, attacked, is really what makes up true love and endures all things and shows us what to do in these situations and finding that, yes, it'll rock the entire world because what they lived, what they endured, and what they taught together reversed the choice of Adam and Eve who chose the physical over the transcendental and as you have it Jesus and Mary took the choice of taking themselves from a human perspective and life back to the transcendental in order that we could have everything so what is my book about? A love story that doesn't contain within it doubt. It doesn't run away from pain. Who together could endure anything, even being separated, even for a moment by death. The knowledge of how you could bring together through pain a love that will endure for eternity. So I look at the cover of my book and I realized that which was guarded, covered over, and hidden away wasn't meant to be rediscovered until now, until these times when people wonder, where is God? What's my life worth? What do I do? Using a physical means of becoming healthier physically, becoming more knowledgeable about issues in our lives and how to deal with them on a mental level. All good. But the one thing that will endure, the one thing that keeps us going, and always will, is that inexplainable, undeniable existence of true love. Thank you.